All right. Hello, everyone. This is Mark, and this video is going to go over how to write a bar graph analysis for the IELTS Academic Writing Task 1. And that, again, is the bar graph. Uh, of course, you can use this in any other English exam. Uh, PTE sometimes uses a similar type of task. Uh, and again, you know, the, this type of analysis is important for well, any type of writing you might have to do that requires data analysis. Now, the most, most important thing we're going to talk about here, and I'll always remind you, is take the time to do the analysis, all right? You've got to look at the macro trend, that is the overall trend uh, in this type of task. Now, let's take a look at the bar graph. So, you can see here up at the top, we have a clear point about the question. It says, the chart below gives information about Southland's main exports. In 2000, here you can see it says 20 and a couple of dots. That means this year. So this will be 2016. And future projections for 2025. So that's important. We have the past, present, and future. You will summarize the information and report the main features. It says write at least 150 words, and remember that's at least 150. I recommend that you plan to write more than this. It's uh, probably your best bet for success here. So, as I said, we'll take a few minutes and just carefully analyze the data. So first of all, we're dealing with British pounds here. You can see the symbol there billion. And you've got three different topics. International tourism, sorry, three different uh, exports. International tourism, dairy products, and meat products. And they've got each year explained here. So if you look here at meat products, you've got 2000, 2016, and 2025. Now, what I would recommend is take five minutes right now, pause the video, and look at the data and uh, see what trends you can find. What is the main trend in this task and what are some of the smaller trends? So take five minutes uh, right now, do that analysis if you're serious about getting that seven or higher. All right, welcome back. And let's take a look at some of the things you might have seen. So what did you find? Well, first, you've probably noticed here with international tourism, it's a steady increase and it's quite strong. It starts at 8 million, or sorry, 8 billion, and increases to 10 billion. Dairy products, also quite strong. It starts at uh, 7 billion. And then you've got an increase up to nearly 10 billion before a slight drop down here to 9.5. Now this is important. So you've got two very strong performers. Uh, this one is a steady increase. And this one also strong, but again, a major increase followed by a slight decrease. Now that's a key thing to notice here when you talk about the overall trend. Two are very strong but they have slightly different patterns. And that's important to keep in mind. And finally, of course, you would have meant, noticed that meat products is just steadily decreasing. So let's take a few notes here. Overall, you can see international tourism is the major part of the graph. That's the biggest increase. It has the most growth. Dairy is also uh, strong, right? It shows the biggest jump here between these two before a slight fall here. And of course, meat being the lowest of them, and it shows this consistent downward trend. So again, uh, this can pretty much form your paragraph structures, your introduction and overall then your second paragraph will be about international tourism. It's got the upward trend, and it's consistently high, and it ends at the highest level of all three. Dairy, on the other hand, it shows major initial growth, and that's important. You want to highlight that this is the biggest jump, 
uh, of any of the exports. So it's a 30% increase. And then a slight drop is expected in that uh, final year. And yes, meatloaf can be your last, or sorry, meat products will be your last paragraph. And you can just see that's pretty simple. It's the lowest trend. Now let's take a look at a sample essay. So your first sentence is going to be pretty standard. Uh, this is not, I mean, this is a sentence that you have to write, but don't think about it too much. And I've said before, even if you just copy it exactly, it really doesn't matter. It's not the best idea to do that, but ultimately this sentence needs to be written, but don't worry about it too much. If it's going to take you a long time to try and paraphrase the sentence, it's really not worth it. So I've just got it simply here. The bar graph shows data. Uh, the bar graphs, sorry, show data regarding Southland's exports and projections for 2025. Here I've got my overall. Overall, although dairy products and international tourism look as though they will both be key exports, tourism will be the strongest. Okay, so you've kind of pointed out that these two are the key points, but you've also pointed out the subtle point that tourism is the stronger one in the end. Okay, so again, you want to find, you've got the overall here, and that's good, but to get that, you know, the, the extra little detail, that extra nuance, point out that small change. Both are strong, one of them will be slightly stronger, or will be the strongest. Now, as for our notes, we started with tourism industry, and it shows a steady upward trend. Remember, you want to identify the trend first and then follow it with data, all right? So remember, that's the structure, trend, then data, trend and support with data. So this is your overall trend. This is your macro trend for international tourism. Now we look at the micro trends. In 2002, it is clearly the strongest of, three in, of the three industries. So again, here, it's 8.1 billion roughly. So you've got the trend and then follow it with the data, providing revenues of just over 8 billion pounds. So again, trend, data, trend, data. After that, you move on to uh, 2016. Now, and again, this is for this year, 2016, the number has increased to just under 9 billion. Now you'll notice here, uh, I've used the present perfect. If you're talking about now and it's increasing from the past, perfect opportunity to use the present perfect tense. Today it has increased. So that's probably the only time, or one of the only times, you're going to use the present perfect in this type of task, if you're comparing the past with today. Following that, you've got your future projection. It is projected that by 2025, revenues will have increased to nearly 10 billion. So here you've got the data first, all right? Also, because we're saying by 2025, and that's important, by 2025, not in 2025, uh, revenues will have increased. So you've got the future perfect tense. This is the exact time you want to show your uh, range of grammar skills. It's where you're going to show your ability to use different types of verb tense. So by 2025, revenues will have increased to nearly 10 billion. So here, I start with the data, and then I follow it with the trend, at which time it will be the strongest of the three industries, which are highlighted in the graph. All right, so uh, yes, at which time, again, very nice little connector here. You know, remember, when you have those uh, linking words like therefore, however, these ones are also important. At which time, again, comma, at which time it will be the strongest of the three industries, which are highlighted in this graph, or to be more efficient, you can just say highlighted in this graph. So again, I make comparisons 
uh, as I'm going through it. So I'm talking about international tourism, but I make appropriate comparisons with the other areas. Then I will move on to dairy products. Dairy products, or dairy, shows a relatively positive trend. So again, overall trend, it's headed up. Starting at just under 7 billion in 2000, its revenues have increased to nearly 10 billion, and that means now. So I don't really need to say that, I've made that clear. And again, you see here, present perfect to show that this means 2016, which is the biggest export in 2016. Okay, so again, I make that point. In 2016, right now, this is the biggest export. So again, comparing it to the other two. Um, moving on, again, by 2025, the exports uh, are expected to have dropped slightly. Trend, followed by data to roughly 9.5 billion. So again, I just say it dropped slightly. Also, note the grammar here. It is expected to have dropped. So you're using that perfect participle there uh, to describe it. They're expected to have dropped, expected to have increased, whichever it is. So keep that in mind. That's a nice way to show off your grammar as well, to demonstrate your range. Instead of just saying will, you've got much more control over your language. Finally, we go on to meat exports. Meat are, exports are, remember, they are the, it is still a large industry, the third biggest industry, but it shows a consistent downward trend. So again, I've got the macro trend for meat products. Starting at 6 billion in 2000, so I start with that, they have since dropped to 5.5 billion. Again, because I'm talking about today, I've got the present perfect again. And are expected to continue decreasing. Now, uh, here I've just used the continuous participle, it's fine. Uh, and then I've supported it with data dropping to 5 billion by 2025. So again, I've got trend supported by data. And then here, I've made a little comparison, which is half the projected output of international tourism. So again, I've highlighted that here, we've got 5 billion, whereas international tourism is around 10 billion. So I make that comparison at the end. So again, remember, every paragraph is a single idea. You want to start with the macro trend and then support it with the trends going from the trend and supporting it with data, all right? So that's the main thing, trend data, trend data. Always wanna work on it that way. Now, just a couple of final notes before I leave you. Uh, mainly just remember, uh, grammar. If you're talking about the future, if it's projections for the future, you can use this structure by that year, and remember, it has to be by and then you can use the future perfect. And this, again, it really shows that you've got a range of grammatical structures that you can use comfortably. Uh, the other one I used was this one. They are projected to have reached 9 billion. So again, you can use any type of verb here. Expected to have increased, uh, projected to have increased, projected to have dropped, any of those types of future tense. And of course, remember the present. Now the revenues have reached 5.5 billion. Um, I didn't use that, but you can also use this. The revenues are currently at 5.5 billion. Again, you've got two ways uh, to say the same thing. And again, you can use only the present simple, but then you're not showing your range of uh, grammatical skills and verb forms. So it's a good idea to practice uh, when you're doing your practice is to use both forms, you know, get some feedback from your teachers, um, you know, to make sure that you're using them correctly. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Uh, just remember the, those last few things. Always, you know, especially when you're practicing, take five minutes to analyze the video, 
remember, if you've analyzed it and you've organized your answer, the, the remaining 15 minutes is more than enough time to get this done. Um, but of course, you know, the main thing that you do is practice, practice, practice. Uh, this is not something you're going to just go and use in the exam tomorrow. You know, you want to practice this for a month or two months before you get into that exam. So please practice, practice, practice. And if possible, get some feedback from uh, your teacher or someone who you trust to give you feedback on your English. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And good luck.